A Stuart 10H steam engine build, part 21. The Stuart 10H is now completed and this is the live steam test on the bench using my model steam engine test plant with a built-in live steam injector facility. It's very important before turning on the gas to do two things. One is hold a flame over the chimney and the other one is open the window. And with any model steam boiler that's gas fired, when you first turn on the gas, don't turn it on full. You don't want to suddenly hit the boiler with a vast amount of heat. Try and warm it up slowly to start with. This boiler is six inches in diameter and has twin gas flues and it does generate a lot of heat. Because of its physical size though, it takes a while to generate the steam. But owing to its physical size, it holds a lot of water and therefore it doesn't need as much attention as a smaller boiler would. Here is the Stuart 10H steam engine that I wish to test connected to the boiler plant. Slowly but surely the water gets hot inside the boiler and starts to boil. And even though there's no pressure showing on the pressure gauge, I've got the valve open to the turret and the turret open to the steam engine, or at least I will have when I've finished oiling it. I'm using Hallett Oil's compounded bearing oil for the main lubrication of the moving parts. And now that the engine is connected to the boiler's turret, which contains a displacement lubricator, it's getting a good supply, or at least I hope so, of steam oil. These small engines get very hot indeed, and I don't just mean the cylinder. Here I'm adding some steam oil into the mix on the bearings. It's just a waiting game now until the pressure builds. What I'm doing here is opening the blowdown valve on the water gauge to release some water from the boiler. I'm not releasing much, but with less water it should raise steam quicker. The valve on the turret is fully open, so any steam will go straight to the engine cylinder and warm it up. There's a tiny bit of pressure, but not enough to make the engine work. At this stage, I turned up the gas valve on the gas tank. This is the exhaust pipe from the engine, temporarily emptying into a food container. I'm doing this so I can see how much oil is in the mix. The cylinder of the engine is now getting very hot indeed. It's a bit too hot to touch. And to avoid any hydraulic lock, I'm carefully rotating the engine. Now I have some pressure, I can use the injector to pump some more water into the boiler. And here I'm doing just that as well as double checking the water level in the water gauge. You can't be too careful. That should be okay. It's a bit slow to go back up the gauge. I don't really know why this is. I'll look into it at some future date. It could be due to a bit of thread sealant in the water gauge fitting, but I don't know. There is now a small amount of pressure available. And if you look at the exhaust pipe in the food container, you can actually see a bit of steam. And then suddenly, the engine roars into life and I immediately turned the steam pressure down on the turret as I don't want the engine to dance off the bench. There isn't much steam at all. When I look at the pressure gauge, this is what it's showing. But the engine runs quite happily on this pressure. I'm sure this engine would run okay on a steam toy boiler like a Willesco or a Mammoth. Here I'm checking the functionality of the safety valve and it's okay. And in this clip I'm fitting the exhaust pipe from the engine to the exhaust condenser. So we're all ready to go. I'm going to stop talking for a while but I will be in and out pointing out various things. Like this, the injector is really touchy and far too sensitive.
The engine runs extremely well. It's very powerful and very fast and the steam pressure that it's receiving is about 35 pounds per square inch. Not even working pressure. The piston rod gland does need tightening and that's going to be a bit of a pain because it's difficult to get to. I'll do that at a later date. And where the steam pipe screws into the elbow it needs sealing with some Loctite 542. But I'm really pleased watching this engine develop from a box of rusty parts to this in quite a short time has been quite an interesting experience. The strange noise that you're about to hear is me using the live steam injector to pump some more water into the boiler. It's definitely a bit touchy, I think I'm going to fit a number 4 which is a larger capacity injector. Eventually I got the injector to work ok and it filled the boiler. During this steam test I also tested the 1896 engine if you've been following my series you will know what that is and I'm going to make another video that will be part of that series showing the steam test on the 1896 engine. I call it that because that's when it was built. The noise you can hear at the moment is just me filling up the water tank from a small plastic bottle. Steam engines always run better on steam than they do on compressed air, but all good things must come to an end and it's vital with a cast iron engine that you do what you see here. First of all squirt in a very small amount of WD-40, run some compressed air through it to blow all the water and residue away, and then pump in some steam oil and this is even more important, do not leave WD-40 in the cylinder against the silicone rubber piston ring. Run it for a while using compressed air to spread the steam oil out and then everything should be fine. You can put the engine away and it will not be rusted solid the next time you want to steam it. To finish this steam test video I want to show you this. The pressure gauge is almost at zero, but not quite. Eventually all the steam inside the boiler will disappear and be replaced with a vacuum and that will suck in a new supply of water from the tank, like this. All ready for the next steam test. That's it for this one. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed this series. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.